Hello and welcome back to Romeo Roots. In this video, I am going to teach you how to read the Swedish household examination records. Now, if you don't know what these are, I wrote a short introductory blog post that you can read and I'll link it down below. If you do know what the household examination records are, then you know that they are the go-to resource for Swedish genealogy. If you're just starting your Swedish genealogy research, it might be a little daunting to tackle these records, especially if you don't know Swedish. So I'm gonna walk you through how to read the records, what each column says, what exactly to look for in the records, and in future videos, I'll show you how to research these records records, how to flip through different books, and I'll show you how to map out your Swedish ancestors using a really cool tool that you can sort of use with the Swedish household examination records. Now before we dive in, make sure to click that like button and subscribe to this channel for more Swedish genealogy tutorials. So here is a perfect example of what a typical page looks like. And keep in mind that this is from the years 1877 to 1881. This is what the uh, examination books look like in those later years. If you go really early to the early 1800s, late 1700s, they are a mess. They are not this clean. You might look at this and think this is a mess because of all these lines and people are crossed out, but um, this is a beautiful, clean page. It's easy to read, and I'm going to walk you through what all you can find on a typical page of these household examination books and what you should get out of them. So um, just for an introduction, we are in Angostad. This is the parish within um, the county of Kronoberg that my Swedish family lived in, um, at least for a few years, they moved around a lot. And it's important to know that these books were taken by parish. And I do have a blog post up on the blog all about Swedish land jurisdictions and divisions. It'll be an introduction to working with these books because it is really helpful to understand those land divisions before you get started. Being a geographical genealogist, as I like to call myself, these books are great for tracing your ancestors and being able to map out all the places that they lived, but you do have to know some geography. So before you get started researching these books, it's pretty helpful to understand the geography of, of it all. So this is the parish of Angostad. The year is 1877 to 1881. And this is on Riksarkivet, not Ar Archive Digital, Archive Digital. Riksarkivet is a government source and it's totally free. You don't need a subscription and I've never used Archive Digital, but this is just as easy, I assume. You can see here we are on page 226 and keep an eye out for page numbers. They are very important because when people moved around, these books reference page numbers. So for example, if you look down here at this family, this references page 57, page 39. So it is really important to pay attention to these page numbers because you can trace your Swedish family back generations just by the page numbers that are referenced in these books. So my family is actually the first one up here. This is my great-great-grandfather Carl Niklas Gustafsson and his wife and these are their uh, eldest children um, and these are the only children that were born in Sweden before the family moves to the States. So this is the last household examination record that they appear in Sweden before they move. So the first thing um, is page number. Pay attention to the page number. The other thing that you notice right off the bat is this long thing up here. These are places. More specifically, and in reference to that blog post that I have linked down below, these are the villages or the farms within parishes. So remember, we're in the parish of Angolstad. So let's just go a few pages back here and you will see that the location will change. So here we're still in the same place. If we keep going back, um, all of a sudden we're in a different place. When you're looking at these books, just pay attention to the places up here. And I, I will do another video on this in the future on how to find these places on modern maps because that can get a little tricky as well. But let's go back to our family. Okay, so this is the place. This is where they live within this parish up here within the county of Kronoberg. Now, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that this is sort of similar to a U.S. census or any standard, you know, enumeration record. You have the names of the people in the household here. You have some dates, some other Swedish words that I'll get to. 
So let's start with this first column. These are the names of the people in the household. And sometimes you'll see abbreviations before the names. For example, down here, EG, or down here, PIG. These are abbreviations for Swedish words. This is an abbreviation for the Swedish word of owner. Um, this one is an abbreviation for the Swedish word of maid. So just by, before you even get to the names, you can sort of pick out relationships. Uh, within the people in the household. Also keep in mind that a household is not an entire page. These are probably two different households. Um, here's another household down here. So uh, they're kind of divided. Um, the H here stands for hustru, which means wife, and then daughter, son, daughter, daughter. So that is another thing to pay attention to, or the first thing to pay attention to in this column are these little abbreviations. They may not seem important, but they are. Um, so here we have Carl and Svenborg. They are uh, husband and wife. And another great thing about these records is that if you're lucky, more often than not, especially in the later records, they will give you the date of marriage. So if you go over here to this column, and here I will uh, terribly pronounce this, Ektenskop is marriage. So gift means married. These words that look like enkel, eller, enka, they are in reference to uh, widow or widower. So if a uh, husband or wife died, the date of their death, or actually not the date of their death, but the date the person would become a widow would be here. This over here means death or dead. So their date of death would be in this column. Typically these should be the same dates. But that is not the case for this couple. They are married, so in under gift, which means married, there is a date. And keep in mind, these are standard European dates, not American dates. So it goes month slash day. Very specific, and the great thing about these records are the specific dates that allow you to trace back, find more records, find marriage and birth records. It is fantastic. These are fantastic record sets to use. So Carl and Stenborg are married on this date over here. These, Fildosa means uh, birth. This is year. So Carl was born 1852. Uh, she was also born 1852. Here are month and day. So February 18th, 1852, September 9th, 1852, and so on and so on. So again, very specific dates. These are places where they were born. Because again, it's under the birth column, under places. And these places that are referenced in these books are typically parishes. So Carl was born in the parish of Berga. And that tells me that when he's a kid, I want to be looking at the Hus for her song there, not in Angolstad, but in Berga, in Berga's Kirkorakiv. This next column over here is in reference to smallpox. V stands for, you guessed it, vaccinated. If my ancestors could get vaccinated in 1877 for an infectious disease, so can you. This column um, is in reference to where they came from when they arrived in this village. So because it's empty, tells me that in the previous household examination books from the previous set of years, I could find them in the same place. Because it doesn't say that they came from anywhere in this column, it's blank. So when I go to look for them in the previous years, uh, 1876 and prior, I want to look for this same location so I can flip through the pages right to this place and look for them amongst the families here. But if they had come from somewhere else, it would either, it would either reference the page number, like this person down here. This tells me that if I flip back to page 57 in this book, I would find her. Or if they came from a different parish, it would reference that parish, just like it would here. For example, Berga or Shona. Place would be here, the year, the month, and the day would be here. So down here, Anna Maria moved here from page 57. If we turn to page 57, we'll find a totally different village. She arrived here in 1881 on July 16th. If we go over to this second page over here, this stuff is not so important for genealogy research, but it can still be fun to explore. Uh, this tests their reading knowledge. Um, these are the dates. So for whatever reason, if you get confused about what dates this your the book that you're looking at is referencing, you can look over here because they'll be filled in. So this book was from the years 1877 to 1881. This uh, is in reference to 
religious things that I don't understand, even if I um, could speak Swedish. I just, I'm not a religious person. I think it's communion. I'm not sure. If you know, tell me in the comments. I'm sorry. I, to be honest, I ignore this entire section because it doesn't really help with my genealogy. Over here in the last column is, uh, you'll notice that the word is similar to the word over here. And again, here is where English and Swedish are very similar. Flitad från, från is from, flitad till, till is to, so moved from and moved to. So this is in reference to where they left and when they left this place. So they left on May 16th and they went to America. And this can also be a little tricky um, where you don't, if you don't know Swedish and you can't and you have a trouble reading old handwriting this can be um sort of tricky to be honest i can't read this but i know that this is the day they went to america because they arrived in america in 1881 <laughs> and you can sort of see ame short for america and this is actually a really interesting little note it says they left for america uh, without attestation um, because in, in in swedish record keeping when a family moved in or moved out, there are move in and move out records, um, but they left without one. That is a very quick overview of one page of the Swedish household examination records. Those are the Swedish household examination records. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. In future videos, I'll show you how exactly to search these records and find your ancestors. I'll show you how to use them to flip back and forward in time and trace your Swedish ancestry through history. And I'll show you how to map out your Swedish ancestors in Sweden using these records. So subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave them down below be sure to click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content just like this.